in many ways, new years and uh, even new decades are arbitrary markers. Our lives are what they are, where they are today. And for most of us, not much will have changed when we wake up on Thursday morning. The real markers are those major historical or personal events that impact and change our lives forever. By which we think of our lives in terms of before and after. 9-11. December 7th, 1941, for a generation before us. Marriage. The birth of a child. The death of a spouse. A vocational disruption before and after. Those become days that are etched in our consciousness for which we pause and remember and reflect. Scripture does not give us much in the way of encouragement when it comes to dwelling on the past or speculating about the future. We're to be people of today. Today is the day of salvation, Paul reminds us. Give us today, we pray, our daily bread, our bread for today. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Aren't you thankful for that? Tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I had the wonderful uh, privilege of uh, greeting a hero flight in Washington, D.C., several hundred World War II veterans who were being flown to uh, D.C., all expenses paid, to bring them to the World War II Memorial so they could see that before they passed. Many of them in wheelchairs. Uh, it, was, it was holy ground. It was absolutely holy ground. And I had the privilege of greeting them and escorting them there. And somebody had made for them um, all bright red baseball type jackets and embroidered across the back on every jacket was every day's a bonus. <laughs> I never forgot that. I thought, what a great line. Every day is a bonus. We don't know if we have tomorrow, do we? We have today. And we live it for him, from him, and to him. But occasionally it is valuable to pause and remember the context in which we live each day and the truths that undergird us for the task each day that should strengthen us and encourage us. And so this Sunday and next Sunday, before we launch into a major series, I thought it would be a good opportunity for us to pause and to think about those truths that are foundational to the living of our lives today. The first of those by way of the life of Joseph, one of my uh, favorite stories in all of Scripture. So I would like us to turn to two passages of Scripture that I want to read this morning. Chapter 45, verses 1 through 8. And then once you've gotten there, if you can turn, keep your finger there and turn to chapter 15, or I'm sorry, chapter 50, verse 15 verses uh, 15 through 21. So 45, 1 through 8, 50, 15 through 21. And when you have those, if you would stand out of reverence for the reading of God's word. <laughs> and she is absolutely fine. It's, it's, it's music to our ears. So we're, we're happy to have her. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants, and he cried out, Make everyone leave my presence. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him, and Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. 
And when they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now, there has been famine in the land, and for the next five years, there will be no plowing or reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire household, and ruler of all Egypt. And in chapter 50, verse 15. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrong that we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph, saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you were to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers their sins and the wrongs that they committed in treating you so badly. Now please, forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. And when their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended it to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. The word of the Lord. You may be seated. <clears throat> 